This just in, breaking news, our top stories tonight, Fedor Holes wins 35,000 euros in a party poker high roller. Yeah, we'll get him next time. Also tonight, tragedy strikes as Tom Dwan is declared missing from Poker After Dark's lineup. Next up, Phil Hellmuth hustles an unsuspecting rube out of $10,000. There's one born every minute. As of today, I have officially launched my new cryptocurrency news website, CoinCentral.com. You guys can find out more information of that later in this video. New camera angle, catchy music, stupid punchline. And finally tonight, what has two thumbs, the last name Polk, and is back on Twitch. That guy, Elliot Polk. He's my brother. All of this and more tonight on Polker News. Now we have a lot of good stories tonight, but before we jump into that, I want to let you guys know what I've been up to for the last few weeks. Now I've had a lot on my plate, and as you might be able to see, I've moved into a new place, and I've set up a new studio to do my videos. It's pretty much completed. So I do know that the audio is not perfect yet. I have some soundproofing that I'm going to be putting up around the room. We're going to fix the lighting. The quality's going to get a bit better, but just bear with me here. I've just moved into this new place. It does feel a little empty though, because anyway, we can maybe add a little flavor. I feel like it needs something. So it's been a busy few weeks, and there's been a lot of poker going on as well. For those of you that don't know, I ended up getting second place in a Poker Masters event to win around 200000 or so on the series. After that, I went to Pittsburgh for King of the Hill 2, a $50,000 winner-take-all heads-up tournament. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. I also spent a couple of the last few days playing on Poker After Dark. Despite booking a 40k win on day one, I had a 100k loss on day two. Pretty new cool format, and I want to talk more about that later as well. My final announcement is as of today, I have officially launched my cryptocurrency news website, CoinCentral.com. Now, you guys at home might not know how involved in the cryptocurrency space that I am. And while I'm not the super tech savvy guy, I bought Bitcoin first about five years ago at around $100. Here's one of the main problems with cryptocurrency. Everyone wants to tell you what's great about their individual coin or what they're investing in, but no one's actually trying to give an unbiased review of how these new coins work or even how these bigger coins work and explain them. We've put an excellent team of writers together at Coin Central, and the idea is to give you guys great great information delivered in a concise and accurate way. Now, some of it's still going to be complicated. We can't change that. You know, the space is, is always changing and there's a lot of information out there to learn. But we want to give you guys the best way to present that information so you can learn and make accurate, informed decisions. Now, Coin Central has only just launched, so our focus is explaining a lot of the bigger coins. We've already done a few ICO articles, and we're going to be focusing more on that in the future as well. Now, if you're someone that doesn't really know about Bitcoin or you don't know anything about Bitcoin and you want to learn more, we just created a PDF that explains what Bitcoin is, how it works, and how you can safely hold it if you decide to buy it. If you are interested in checking that out, you can do so at the link below. And if you're a more advanced cryptocurrency user, because I know a lot of poker players have been in this space for a while, and you want up-to-date articles on the new ICOs coming out, I'd strongly recommend checking out CoinCentral.com. Moving on, let's talk a little bit of poker. If you guys didn't check it out, last weekend was King of the Hill 2. King of the Hill is a format from Poker Night in America where all players buy in for $50,000 and the winner leaves with 200 k The first King of the Hill, I was actually a contestant before losing to Phil Hellmuth, who went on to defeat Jungle Man in the finals to become the first King of the Hill. Now, the second iteration featured the reigning champ, current King of the Hill, Phil Hellmuth, and a few new contestants, Olivier Bousquet, Parker Talbot, and also Sean Deeb. Now, Hellmuth didn't have the same luck the second time around, ended up losing in the first round to Tonka, and then Olivier Bousquet beat Deeb on the other side of the bracket. In the finals, it was a clean sweep. Olivier never even lost a round, went 4-0, two best two out of three series, to take down the belt and become our current King of the Hill champion. I was the host of the event, and we had a kind of interesting sideline reporter. Why are you folding when this guy has the nuts, man? I, I'm you talk. Uh, what's up? <laughs> he was like attacked by head. The title belt and also this crown that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. So I wanted to bring you some comfort food that I thought like a streamer might feel a little bit better about. I thought Wonderful. like a Mountain Dew with some Sour Patch Kids, you'll feel right at home again. Maybe get you back into that mindset to take it down. I honestly hate both of these things. 
Also over the weekend, I revealed one of my most useless talents. Ready, set, go. Four, three, two. Dougie Polk's in the house! Yeah! Shannon! Now, I think the man's is kind of interesting. He actually does a few videos right here on YouTube, but he's certainly a polarizing character. A lot of people hate him. A lot of people love him. Let me know what you think of the man's in the description below. All in all, I love the King of the Hill format. And look, I know I'm biased. I played heads up most of my career. I love one-on-one, -on -one, duking it out. Somebody gets knocked out. There's only one winner. I think it's an amazing format. I'm hoping to get back on the show at some point in the future. But before I can get back on as a contestant, King of the Hill 3 is gonna be coming up in Philadelphia. And once again, your boy is gonna be the host on October 25th and 26th. If you guys want to check out those streams, you can do so over on Twitch at Poker Night TV. Should be a fun one. We got a few new people jumping into the lineup. Of course, Olivier Bousquet coming in as the current champion. He's going to be going up against Dan Coleman, one of his best friends in poker. I'm kind of praying they match up maybe first round or finals. And then also Brandon Adams, who defeated somebody that I can't seem to remember in the finals of a Poker Go event. I'm on. Yep. You do too much of this. I call. Snap oh, Doug's, call by Adams. Doug is going to hate this. Oh, God damn it. Really? Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm destroyed. Oh, my God. Brutality. Maybe heads up, just not my game. Am I a tournament player now? Rounding out our four contestants is this year's World Series of Poker main event champion Scott Bloomstein who's going to jump into the mix and battle with our contestants. Should be a great event and I'm definitely looking forward to hosting it but something else happened while I was in Pittsburgh and it happened right here on the channel. My 10k to your 1k right? Yeah. Everyone's good. Here we go. 10 to 1. Here we go. I just can't beat this guy. He always gets me. How? You know, it was raining. There was wind. The rim is visibly crooked. Can we get the rim up? Can we show the rim? The rim is visibly crooked. And on top of it, he's been drinking, okay? And yeah, he hustled me with a little bit of the, we got you the college three-point line, not the NBA. That's bullshit, Phil. I know you meant NBA. You only watch NBA games. One way or another, you got to give it to Phil. The man is clutch. He shows up to play. Whatever he does, he seems to always have a chance to win. And yeah, maybe he was a 1 in 5 chance to make it. Maybe he was a 1 in 4 chance to make it. But all these people saying, Doug, you're a prop bet fish, while that may be true, I did it for the spirit of the game. I mean, how often are you out drinking with Phil Helmuth at 1 a.m. and he wants to prop bet on shooting threes? You have to take that chance for the story, for the stream for poker. Are they going to buy that? Sounded pretty good. Next up, Fader Holes wins another tournament, but this time it was only for 35,000 euros and it had a 2,000 euro buy-in. What are you, broke? Seriously though, is this really a story? It just feels like Fedor did something, so we're all going to look at it and just be like, oh yeah, he won something again. I mean, when people win 35,000 euros, that's not really newsworthy. It's only because it's Fedor. I mean, look, the buy-in was 2K. This is 17 and a half buy-ins. Eh. Eh. Slow news week. This brings us now to Poker After Dark. Now, if you guys haven't been keeping up with the news, where have you been? Because Poker After Dark's been back in the mix for a couple of months now. It does feel good to see Poker After Dark, the iconic show from late night TV, back in the mix, and I've been very happy to get to plan it a couple times. Now, I do have to say the first week was epic. You had Tom Dwan battling it out with Daniel Negreanu and Antonio Esfandiari, huge pots, high stakes, and the bar was set extremely high. I do think in the last couple of weeks, it's been a little bit slower, including a PLO game that didn't play nearly as big as you might expect. Now the lineup had a lot of great players, and when you have good players, obviously they're gonna be a little bit more conservative, but it did play a bit on the small side. Another problem with the Poker After Dark PLO MG week 
was that Tom Dwan was advertised to be on for all three days, but then only managed to show up for one of them. Look, if I said it once, I said it a hundred times, I'm basically a broken record at this point, but I'll just say it again. Why are you guys so jealous of Tom Dwan? I can already see these bullshit fake news stories cropping up. I mean, what? Tom Dwan is supposed to be there because he said he would. Yeah, okay, sure. Like, that matters. Why are you guys so obsessed with Tom Dwan? Maybe it's time to just reel it in a little bit. You know, have you ever thought about the fact that you're sitting at home right now and Tom Dwan is out there crushing the highest stakes and hanging out with the hottest dudes? Also, and this is some serious bullshit from Poker Go, they had him play with Jungle Man without even letting him know. They forced Tom Dwan against his will to play hands against Jungle Man. That shit's fucked up. Also, when Tom Dwan did show up the day two of the three days he was supposed to play, he had to sit there and listen to Jungle Man take constant passive aggressive shots at him. I mean, just look. I said, even though you're running so much in short time? I'm just lazy. It seems just, you know, it's just, also, you know what it is? It's like, kind of pisses me off a little bit to be playing short deck heads up when, you know, we should be playing, like, full deck heads up. <laughs> it's a little bit tilting, but whatever. Now, I know, despite what the media wants you to believe, that there are many of us Tom fans still out there trying to protect him. In fact, our boy Mans had a little moment on King of the Hill, too. Why are you getting sad? What's going on? Because he's my dear friend Tom Dwan's and I don't know where he is. I think we found him, man. No, we didn't find him. I think we did. Did you? Did you? I've been messaging him. I've been looking for him. I oh, oh, I didn't know we were. I did. Did we? I thought we were going to get some beers and have a good time and you have to bring up Tom Dwan. Okay, all right. If you want someone to show up for your little $100,000 buy-in game, find someone that actually cares. My boy Tom, going to stay crushing. Anyway, after PLOMG week, we had an interesting week going down this week. I was actually part of it. It was a hybrid format that I really enjoyed. It's basically a cash game, but with escalating blinds. The blinds raise four times. They start at 200, 400, and they end at 600, 1200, and you buy in for 100,000. So by the end, the stakes are actually pretty big, and a couple of the players have already left. And by left, I mean they lost all of their money. I would know. That's how I ended day two. I want to quickly address something because a lot of my fans get angry about this constantly. When I'm at the end of a session, I am not trying to book a win. I'm not trying to leave up money. I'm playing every hand to make the most money I can. I don't care if I lose all of my money on the last hand. If I think I have to four bet queens and go with it, I'm going to do that. It doesn't matter to me to book the win. You know, poker is just one long session and every hand you're playing an individual moment. Sessions are just a string of moments, you know, at the end of the, at the end of your career, when you look back, you're, you just played millions of hands in a row. The days changed, but the hands were all in sequence. Play to win. Don't be afraid to get stacked. You know what? If you're going to get made fun of on the internet, so be it. That's part of the game, especially on a TV show. People are going to rip you to shreds. And actually one last thing while I've got you, don't make fun of some of these people that put up a lot of money and come on the show to try and, you know, battle it out with the pros. It really tilted me the way that Lauren Roberts got treated when she was on for the first week, you know, giving her best to play super high stakes against huge names and try and compete. And so many people like to be, you know, armchair quarterbacks or whatever the term is and just say like, oh, well, you should have done that. You should have done this. You know, that was a bad play. Yeah, sure. When you can see the cards, it's easy. But this is real money and people are giving it their absolute best in front of thousands of people. So just try and have a little respect for them. All right, that's gonna do it for me here at the new Polker News Studios. If you guys liked today's video, hit that thumbs up button. And also, remember to subscribe to the channel, guys. Support what we're doing here. I love bringing you guys good content, and let's try and grow the empire.